if the public's reaction to a radio dramatization resulted in a nationwide wave of terror, what would happen if they really came? Los Angeles, California. In the early months of 1942, the city was on edge. The recent surprise attack on Pearl Harbor had propelled America into World War II. And the threat of a Japanese invasion by sea or by air kept the military on full alert. Pearl Harbor was a very recent memory for people. People were in high alert. There was a great deal of suspicion. Japanese Americans were being put in internment camps. There were German U-boats in the Atlantic, Japanese submarines in the Pacific, and people were very fearful. In a well-organized defense operation, air raid wardens and the Coast Guard were monitoring the Pacific shoreline as never before. The war had started. I was a 13-year-old kid. And this one night, which was February 1942, the sirens started wailing in the middle of the night. Blackout. And we'd had several blackouts before this. On February 25th, between the hours of 3.12 and 4.15 a.m., the 37th Coast Artillery Brigade in Los Angeles fired off a barrage of anti-aircraft shells at an unidentified flying object. Watchers on the rooftop of the Columbia Broadcasting Building in the heart of Hollywood could plainly see the flashes of guns and searchlights cruising the skies in a wide arc along the coastal area. I think what woke me up initially was the sound of anti-aircraft guns. I jumped out of bed and my parents were up. My father was an air raid warden 